welcome to another build video for Baldur's Gate 3. Today, we're going to be talking about a new build called the Battle Fist. Battle Fist is primarily a monk fighter build with a few levels of rogue sprinkled in to give you a lot of flexibility, a lot of movement, a lot of bonus actions, and of course, it makes use of some interesting mechanics. So let's take a look at the leveling breakdown. The first five levels are going to be primarily monk, so you can experience most of the game as a monk. I do recommend that you start as a dexterity-based monk at first. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of items up to uh, in the beginning of the game, and usually it's a better way to get your AC up and comparable to some of the plate wearer classes. I like going with mostly dexterity and wisdom, that way you can have an AC of 16 right off the bat, a respectable constitution of 14, um, and a strength of 10 to help you carry at least some of the gear. Now the skill proficiencies are up to you as to what you want to choose. I do recommend athletics as a top pick, acrobatics is not bad as well, um, and of course, slide of, uh, of course, if you want some insight or other RP abilities, feel free to pick them up here. Moving on to level two, we are going to continue on with Monk. At level two, you get some interesting abilities using more of your key points, including Step of the Wind and Patient Defense. You'll be able to move all around the battlefield, and we will make use of un unarmored movements to make you more mobile for the first few levels. At level three, we get our first choice for a monk subclass. Now at this point, you can experiment with any subclass you wish, but since this is the Battle Fist, we want to get a taste of the Way of the Open Hand Monk, which is going to be our primary monk, but feel free to experiment with the other two. Now that's going to give us Flurry of Blows, but with some additional mechanics built in, including Topple to knock enemies prone, and Push, which will push enemies further away and potentially off cliffs for you. At level four, we're going to pick up our first feat. Now this feat is not going to be, um, it's up to you which one you want to do. I like to go with anything that will boost up our dexterity back to 18. You can take your ability score increase up top. You can do mobile for a bit of battlefield control where you could be dashing around. I like picking up athlete for that one level. You can uh, really make your jumps matter and get into hard to reach areas. Like I said, up to you, as long as you get your dexterity up to 18 at this level, that's going to help with your AC, your chance to hit, and your damage. At level 5, we're going to continue on to Monk, and we're going to take Monk 5 for the extra attack. Now, our wisdom is not going to be too, too high in the long run, but at this level, feel free to make use of Stunning Strike and the extra attack. Now, at level 6, we're actually going to respec, and we're going to see an NPC in town to be able to do that. Um, and we're actually going to start as a fighter. Now, with a fighter, you have a couple of different fighting styles. Pick whichever one you prefer. I like dueling uh, myself. Defense is good. Um, if you plan on using a great weapon for a little bit of time, feel free to pick that up. But defense is not bad. Dueling is my choice. And this is your ability spread right here. Strength is actually going to be our primary ability score. And that allows us to dump most of the other stats. We're not going to rely on them as much, including wisdom. And we're just going to put dexterity at 14 and constitution in 14 to give us decent hit points and an okay initiative. As far as skill proficiencies go, feel free to change them up however you wish or keep them as they were. Next, we're going to take one level of monk and all the abilities we're going to make use of are in there, except we are not going to be making use of the unarmored defense. We are going to be putting on some heavy armor. Now, at Monk 2, you are going to get those key abilities to dash and patient defense. Um, you do not need to make too many choices there. At Monk level 3, Fighter 1, you're going to get to pick a subclass, and we are going to stick with the way of the open hand here to give us some interesting ways to use our flurry of blows. Now, this is a very important level. Uh, at Fighter 1, Monk 4, we're going to take a feat, and the feat is Tavern Brawler. 
Now, Tavern Brawler right now is a little bit broken, where it allows you to add your strength modifier twice. Uh, so you're going to be getting a good chance to hit. We're going to keep progressing on to Monk, pick up extra attack, just like we did before. And monk 6, Fighter 1. We're going to take our last Monk level. That's going to give us some extra um, abilities, such as your unarmed strikes becoming magical and the ability to add a little flavor damage of Radiant or Necrotic or Psychic on top. Now we sort of come to a crossroads where you can pick a couple of different ways to progress your levels from here on out. Uh, you can maybe take another level of Fighter and get Action Surge to get a little bit more uh, Burst Nova sort of damage right away. You can maybe take one level of Monk to, to get a little bit more defense. I like to progress into another class, which is a rogue. We're actually going to pick up our first rogue level here. That's going to give us sneak attack. We're not going to be making use of that too often, but every once in a while it would work out, depending on your weapon choices. Uh, feel free to pick up your proficiencies and skills that you are lacking. I do like to take athletics in mind, and as you can see, you get a nice big boost to them. And... Uh, you know, you can always pick up a few extra points into Persuasion if you're primarily the, the Charisma Talker with an 8 Charisma. I don't recommend it, but if it helps you out, you do it as well. Then we're going to progress to Rogue 2, which gives us a uh, better use of one of our bonus actions. Then we're going to pick up our third Rogue, and we're actually going to take the Thief subclass, and that's going to enable us to have one extra bonus action. That's very important extremely important now the last uh, few levels as we're approaching the end uh, we still have a bit of flexibility you can always derail and maybe go fourth level into rogue um, but I prefer to go fighter so we can pick up that action surge again and for the last level at level 12 that gives you again some choices on subclasses we are the Battle Fist. We are the Masters of Battle. We're going to take the Battle Master. And I'm going to show you two maneuvers that I find to be pretty crucial. The first being the push, pushing maneuver, pushing attack. And the second being a repost. Pushing attack will allow you to uh, push back very heavy uh, critical enemies. And repost will let you attack back when an enemy misses you. And with... Uh, high AC with heavy armor that's going to happen pretty often you'll be able to make good use of these battle master maneuvers you can always consider some other ones for your third choice any any one would work trip attack is not bad sweeping attack is not bad you can choose whichever you prefer and that wraps up the leveling side of the build uh, at level 12, uh, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about itemization without giving too many spoilers away. Uh, there are plenty of weapons and armor to find. I made this character in mind so you can pick up a good portion of what the game has to offer and customize your character accordingly. I like going around with a sword and board approach to crank up our AC. And as you can see, we are still dealing respectable damage. Um, and with our two bonus actions, we do hit quite often, quite hard. And with two bonus actions, we actually have a lot of flexibility as far as attacking twice and using two flurry of blows. That will really drain your key very quickly, but it is an option to burst someone down. And of course, you can use your second bonus action for mobility, disengage, and a few other things such as healing yourself with potions there's a lot of flexibility in that second bonus action and we make real good use of it now the key part of this build is really tavern brawler um, it is going to allow you to hit very hard um, and of course it enables another good skill since we're using uh, a lot of athletics which is shove 